The fall month of September has its fair share of events and macro data to study. Key in the data was the most recent batch of U.S. economic data. Let's get the read on that now from our chief equity strategist and economist, John Blank. John, inflation ticked up at the consumer level in August, the most in 14 months, according to the headlines. Wholesale price increases accelerated. Retail sales were up last month as consumers spent more on gas. So what do the headline numbers say about the strength of the U.S. economy, first of all? Well, the headline numbers on, on the broad inflation rate are not what the Fed cares about. For us, well, number one, so the, the market and the consumer does care about the broad rise in the inflation rate, but the Fed does not. The Fed cares about the core inflation rate, and the key thing within the core, the sub-index that matters most, is shelter cost. That is either you know what you pay for your house if you own it, or renting more specifically. That went up three-tenths month-on-month in August. Take that times 12, that's 3.6 annualized. So while that was the lowest monthly increase this year, it is heading in the right direction. 3.6% is still close to double what the Fed would like it to be. So that's why they went higher for longer this week, Terry. Uh, We need shelter costs to come down to 0.1% month on month for four or five months, if not go zero. That would get the Fed off the sidelines. So the takeaway then for our listeners is look past the headline numbers to the internals of these indicators to get the full story on the economy. Correct. Absolutely correct. Markets were a little moved on the news. Uh, Does the data give the Fed a reason to change course on policy or maybe hit the pause button on rate hikes? This week they hit the pause button, didn't they? They hit the pause button. You have to understand they're five and a quarter, five and a half now. So the halfway point of that is, is five or 5.38%. Their terminal end for 2023 is 5.6. So that's basically calling for one more 25 basis point rate hike in the November or December meeting this year. Now, then next year, they went to 5.1% from 4.6%. So you can do the math yourself. That's what they're going to say is we're going to hike to 5.5 to 5.7 and then take off 225 basis point uh, cuts somewhere in 2024, probably the second half. So the second half of 2024 is where the weakness should manifest itself that I've talked about in terms of shelter costs already, but also in terms of the economy, unemployment rates, consumption, et cetera. And that, that is a very interesting point in time because it's also right in front of the U.S. election. So that's the other reason the market may bet on cuts to rates is it will be in front of an election. Was the outcome of this week's Fed meeting already baked into the market then? Absolutely. I mean, at least for anybody with any uh, sanguine view on higher for longer, uh, which, you know, I personally did have, you know, going into the meeting. So higher for longer is, is the Fed's tracking, you know, with sincerity, its statutory mandate to keep core consumer price expectations at 2%. Expectations is the language, Terry. That means the forward look on inflation. So they that's why they put that long-term outlook up higher and left it there for longer. Now, on the flip side, what does the data say about the consumer, especially with regard to wages and their ability to keep spending? Well, the you know, the consumer is in the fall and the children are back to school and a lot of revenge travel has probably been done. So it will be remains to be seen where the consumer heads. But as long as the job market stays stable, I wouldn't get too bearish on consumers. Has any of this data changed your outlook on the economy for the rest of the year? No, it hasn't, Terry. Um, I think the higher yields on bonds and CD rates, you know, is putting a cap into the S&P 500, but the S&P 500 has risen 15% year on year, so it's having a decent year, keeping the wealth effects from the stock market in place. And the the housing market still hasn't cranked in on these rates either. So so wait and see on, on on the asset price deflation story that could take the market down hard. And uh, wait and see means wait and see. What do you uh, see as far as an impact on the UAW strike uh, having on the economy? Or is it still too early to tell? Too early, Terry. Too early. All right. You've highlighted three large cap stocks with good momentum recently in your writings. They are Intuitive Surgical, Ingersoll Rand, and Weyerhaeuser. Yeah, Intuitive Surgical, talking on the 21st of September, is a number two ranked stock with a B for growth. Um, but a price at 290 and a target price at 320. Um, again, what's driving that? Uh, basically, 
it sold off hard in its last earnings report from the 350s down to the 290s and 280s, and there's a kind of a bounce in play here. So trading-wise, I like Intuitive Circle Surgical. Ingersoll Rand, um, it's trading at 65 with a target price of 76, number one ranked stock here. It's been on an amazing and impressive momentum run because its earning estimates measures are going up, but it looks super pricey to me. I don't generally like Ingersoll Rand at these levels. I'd wait for a bigger pullback. Weyerhaeuser, number one ranked stock. This is your uh, typical you know, lumber stock, and you've got 32% upside to estimate revisions 2024 and 22 for 2025. So again, from an estimate revision perspective, people are starting to look into these lumber stocks again. Uh, so Weyerhaeuser at $32 a share looks pretty attractive to me. Our chief equity strategist and economist, John Blank on what recent macro U.S. economic data means for our economy. With John, I'm Terry Ruffalo. Here's something you may want to check out. Just released five stocks set to double, where four Zacks experts each announce their single favorite pick with the potential to gain 100% and more in the months ahead. You can download that private special report at zacks.com promo. This material is being provided for informational purposes only, and nothing herein constitutes investment, legal, accounting, or tax advice, or a recommendation to buy, sell, or hold a security. Do not act or rely upon the information and advice given in this podcast without seeking the services of competent and professional legal, tax, or accounting counsel. Publication and distribution of this podcast is not intended to create, and the information contained herein does not constitute an attorney-client relationship. No recommendation or advice is being given as to whether any investment or strategy is suitable for a particular investor. It should not be assumed that any investments in securities, companies, sectors, or markets identified and described were or will be profitable. All information is current as of the date herein and is subject to change without notice. Any views or opinions expressed may not reflect those of Zach's investment research as a whole.